Hello everybody, this video is about getting started with open source and more specifically how to contribute to open source as a beginner. Contributing to open source projects is a great way of improving your programming skills and contributing to the community. Also, it's important to understand that contributing to open source projects is not all about coding. You can contribute in other ways such as improving the documentation, organizing the project, designing stuff, reviewing code and so on. Before moving further, I want to advise you to read the contribution guidelines and the code of conduct. They describe the workflow required to make contributions and what is expected of you. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. One more thing. This video is theory heavy because it explains what you have to do and why you should do it that way. What you learn in this video and the steps you follow you can apply to more complex projects. So please watch this video with attention and if you want to make the most of it watch it until the end. Of course if you like it don't forget to drop a like. Thank you. The first step of the video is to help you find a project where you can contribute. As we know, finding a project to contribute is a difficult task for beginners. As a result, I advise you to start small and pick a small project at first. And you may ask, why should I do that? The reason is that things move faster in a small project and it's more likely to get your first contributions. Moving further, there are lots of websites where you can find projects to contribute to but in this video, I want to recommend four of them which are suited for beginners. You can see the list here and by looking at the name, you can see that the issues are targeted to beginners. For example, good first issues, good first issue. Let's start with the first one which is goodfirstissues.com. This is how it looks and it has a very intuitive UI. You can filter by the programming language, for example, let's choose JavaScript. You can filter by the issue label, let's search for something like documentation and also you can filter by repository. Clicking on this button will take you to the issue on GitHub. The next one, it's goodfirstissue.dev. Let's open this one as well and let's have a look. This website is very simple as well and you can filter issues by the programming language. Now you can just click on it and it will take you to the GitHub repository as well. The next one is up for grabs. This website is just a list of projects which have curated tasks specifically for new contributors. As usual you can filter by name, you can filter by label and you can filter by tags. And lastly we have the GitHub Explore page which is more general than the other three and it's not targeted only to beginners. So you have to do a little bit more work here. Moving further, these four websites should be more than enough to find a project. If not, pick a tool that you use daily and contribute to that tool if it's open source. Alternatively, you can follow this tutorial where I'll show you a repo where you can make a very simple contribution. This tutorial assumes basic knowledge of Git. The Git workflow you will be using is as follows. Fork the repository to your GitHub account, clone the project on your machine, create a branch before making changes, make your changes, commit and push your changes and open a pull request finally. The above workflow is the most basic one and it's enough to contribute to open source projects. In my case, I used it with great success and I made some open source contributions. The next step is to fork the project you chose. So all you have to do is to go to this URL which you can find into the description and click on the fork button. And then you have to wait for forking to be finished. Now you might ask why fork it first and not clone it directly. When you fork a project you make a copy of it in your account. As a result you can work on it without affecting the original repository. Forking creates a separate copy whereas 
cloning downloads the project on your machine. Also, you cannot make changes to the repository if you only clone it. The reason is that only authorized people can make changes to a repository. By forking the project, you can make changes and submit pull requests. As you can see, after the forking is complete, it will redirect you to your copy of the project. It's made of your GitHub username slash the repo name. The next step is to clone the project from your account on your machine. Go to the repository page and click on this green button saying code. From here you have to copy this URL and then go to your terminal and run the following command git clone and the URL. After cloning is done, open the repository in your favorite code editor. Before making any changes to a code base, it's important to create a new branch. Branches allow people to work on the project without getting into conflict with each other. Also, each branch is independent of others, so the changes from your branch are not visible in another branch, unless they are merged, of course. In the simplest words, your branch holds the changes you make to the project. Also, read the branch naming convention of each project. All projects specify how you should name your branches. Some examples are your name slash issue fix. For example, Catalin Pete, which is my name slash issue fix. Another example is the issue number and then the issue itself. For example, here you can see the number of the issue and then you can see the name of the issue. So now you are going to create a branch. You can create a new branch as follows. Type git branch and then the name of your branch. For example, in this case, let's say it's Catalin Pete slash add my name. Now that we created the branch, we can use it by running git checkout and then let's copy the branch name. You can see that the active branch is Catalin Pete slash add my name. Alternatively, you can do the same thing in one command as follows. You can write git checkout p and then your branch name. Now that you created a new branch, you are ready to make changes. The changes you make into each project depends on what the project is about and about what issues you are working on. However, using this example GitHub repository, we will add our Twitter account in the README file. So let's open README.md and let's add our Twitter handle and the name randomly. So let's write. And you have to publish your changes. The first step to publish your changes is to add all your changes to the staging area. Basically, the add command includes your updates from a particular file in the next commit. You can either run git add and then the name of the file which is readme or you can run git add dot which adds all your changes. Therefore, if you only want to add specific files, you have to specify their name. But if you want to add all your changes, you can run it like this, git add dot. For example, if you made changes in 10 files, it adds all those files. On the other hand, you can handpick changes by specifying the file name. Now the next step is to commit the changes. You included the updates in the staging area, but now you have to commit them as well. Committing files means saving your updates to the local repository. Think of it as saving a Word document after making changes. You can do so by running git commit m, which stands for message, and then you have to add a commit message. You should describe what you did in the project. Try to make the commit messages as concise and descriptive as possible. At the same time, it doesn't mean you should write a novel. So let's write something short. Edit my name and Twitter.
and then the last step is to push the changes to the remote repository. Until you push your changes, they are only available in your local repository. That is, nobody can see them except yourself. To push your changes, run the following command git push u origin and then your branch name, which in my case is this one. Then press enter. Then you can see you can create a pull request by simply clicking on this link. In my case, I'll just copy it and then go to the browser. And paste it here. Before submitting the pull request, make sure you read the contribution guidelines. At the minimum, add a descriptive title and description. And then we press on the create pull request and we are done. Here is the pull request. Now all you have to do is to wait for the repository owner or owners to review your changes and approve them or decline them. Before finishing you might ask why do you need a PR? By opening a pull request, other people can see the changes you've made to the code base. Additionally, it allows other members to do a code review, which in turn might help you improve your skills and code. Therefore, you can get valuable feedback. Also, some changes might not be approved for various reasons such as poor code quality, inefficient implementation and many others. By creating pull requests, you protect the code base from unwanted additions. Without pull requests, everyone can merge whatever they want to the main branch. Therefore, the code quality will suffer. In conclusion, PRs helps and allows developers to maintain a high quality code base, avoid introducing bugs, get feedback on the code and improve their skills and code. That's the end. If you follow the tutorial up to this point, you should be able to make open source contributions no matter the complexity of the project. I'm curious to see if you found the video useful, so please let me know in the comments. Thank you.